In this video, I'm going to install this fire and sound insulation in my bedroom remodel. And we're going to see how well it actually works. And we're going to do it right now. We are back in my bedroom remodel. I just finished up the exterior wall insulation, the fiberglass, as well as in the ceiling. And the next step that I want to do in here is to do this soundproofing insulation. I like to do it in all the interior walls just to cut down on the sound. Let's say somebody's sleeping in here and you want to stay up and play some games at the table or something. You want to make a bunch of noise. Even if you're just watching TV or getting up to use the bathroom, I want to try and make it so that the sound isn't as loud in between these rooms. It also helps with fire resistance, so obviously that's a good thing. And in this room, I'm actually going to attempt to measure how well it actually soundproofs. And the way that I'm going to measure that is with this sound level meter or decibel meter. So I'm going to do a series of tests where I'm going to leave this in here and I'm going to play some music on that side of the wall, that side of that wall, and on the other side of this wall. And then I'm going to switch to putting the music in here and then putting the decibel meter on the other side of that wall, the other side of this wall, and of course the other side of this wall and we'll see what the difference is and how well this stuff actually works. Of course, a really great test would be if I did some fiberglass insulation first on all these walls and then compared it to the mineral wool, which is what this is, or some other type of insulation, but that would be a waste for me. I'd end up throwing the insulation away and I don't really have that kind of money to just throw away. So we're just gonna compare this thermofiber to a wall that has nothing in it. So let's take a quick look at what I'm gonna be using. This is Thermofiber Fire and Sound Guard Plus. Professional grade mineral wool, mold resistant, fire resistance above 2000 degrees, that's a lot. Excellent sound performance. And that little one right there, you follow this down, versus uninsulated wall assemblies. Hey, that's exactly what we're gonna be testing. And this is made pretty similar to fiberglass. Basically, rocks are melted down to very high temperature, and then it's spun like cotton candy, and it makes these little tiny fibers. And that's how you get mineral wool. This is R15, the same as this insulation. You can actually use this stuff on exterior walls. There's nothing wrong with that. You just need to add a vapor barrier. But I'm just going to use it on the interior walls three and a half inches, which is perfect for this wall and this wall. But this wall, I'm gonna end up having to cut them down somehow because this is only a two by three wall, which should be fine. This stuff is pretty easy to work with. I should be able to cut it in half. The first thing I wanna do is get all of these out of the room so I can limit the amount of variables for this test, try and keep it a little consistent, have an empty room, and then at the end, I'll have an empty room, but all the insulation will be in the walls. So as I'm talking, you can see that the decibels are going up and down. So instead of recording this and then going through the footage afterwards, what you can do is you can do a min max so it'll hold on the minimum decibels. So that is the quietest that it's been. You can see it goes down if it gets quieter. And then you can change it to max, 42.6, 70.8. See how it's not moving if I talk very softly. But if I get louder, it'll change like that. 82 decibels is the max. And if I get louder, there you go. So I think I'm going to leave it on max. And then that's going to tell us the maximum volume or decibels coming from that speaker. Also, it has a little light on it. How cool is that? Here is the other side of that wall, and I have my speaker set up. I'm gonna make sure to have the same volume everywhere and keep it consistent. I'm gonna play some royalty free music from my phone to that speaker.
right, I did a bunch of testing. Here are my super scientific numbers that I have. The room sound, just the decibel meter sitting in here with nothing going on. The minimum sound with me being super quiet was 32.4 decibels. And the max, 46.2, was basically when a car drove by and you could hear it out the window. And I left the speaker in here and had the decibel meter a couple feet away and it was 89.7. So that's the max volume basically that this thing was putting out. So I took this and I put it on the outside of each wall. That's what these measurements are. 59.1, that was with the decibel meter right here. And then I ended up moving it a foot away from the wall just to get a, a better reading. So 61.9 decibels right there. 72.6 with it right here facing that way and 54.4 with it sitting right here facing that way, 57.3 with it a foot off the wall. And the other measurement right here is leaving the speaker inside the room and taking the decibel meter around to the other side of the wall, holding it about a foot or two away, 59.2 decibels, 68.5 decibels in that hallway, and then 59.1 on the other side of that wall. So I think those numbers will give me a good idea of how much more quiet this is after I insulate each of these walls. Let's go over the basics of how to install this stuff. First of all, PPE, personal protection equipment. You should probably wear gloves, long sleeve shirt, and have a mask on. This stuff used to be a lot worse to deal with. It's not as bad now, but it can still irritate you. Put my mask on, and if you have studs that are 16 inch on center really simple you just take the piece and squeeze it in between the studs and let it kind of expand just push it in there and voila you're all set if your entire wall is like this then you got no issues but of course you're gonna have wires, you're gonna have studs that are closer than 16 on center. So I'm gonna show you how to cut this stuff. By the way, if you are getting this inspected, it's a good idea to keep the lettering, this says R15, keep that facing towards the house so the inspector knows what R value you have in there because they do make this in R13 as well. They may even make it thicker than this, but that's something to keep in mind. So I need a piece seven and a half inches ripped like this. So. Just like with fiberglass insulation, I like to make this a little bigger just so it holds itself in that bay with pressure, basically. It expands and holds itself there. But with this, you don't want to make it too big because then you start to crush it and it starts to kind of fall apart. So I like to go maybe a quarter or a half inch bigger than what I actually need. So I need seven and a half. I'll go about seven and three quarters. Just make a couple marks so I don't lose where I am. Now you can cut this with a utility knife, but this could take you a while. You just mark like this and then go back down. The cut's pretty easy, but to save all that time, what I like to do is use an old kitchen knife. Somebody commented and said, is that a Ryobi kitchen knife? No, but that's pretty funny. Have it nice and sharp so that I can just drop it in here and put some pressure on it. Make one slice. But that works way better. Your piece is ripped. You can do the same thing here. So highly recommend an old kitchen knife. Definitely don't put this back in the drawer when you're done with it. So this is where this piece goes right here that's going to be a perfect fit but you can see that there's wires going through like this so when you have wires that go through straight across one little tip i like to do is we'll say they're going right here i like to just take a utility knife because i always keep this on me instead of the kitchen knife. And now when I install this, I can open it up like this. 
and then kind of go over those wires and this will be nice and flush and it won't be bowed out right here where those wires are and don't forget about stuff like this there's a void back here behind this outlet and this is not insulated at all so you definitely have some sound penetration right here so you can just take a scrap piece and you can just kind of rip this stuff apart and tuck it in there you can grab a screwdriver or a pry bar just to push it into place just to make sure you're making everything as soundproof and as fire resistant as you can something like that and then you can take your full size piece cut out this square and put it in this bay now for this wall I have a couple options it's a two by three wall so I can either take this jam it in there and compress this when I put the drywall on but this stuff is a lot more stiff than fiberglass so I might have some issues when I go to put the drywall on I don't want screws popping or anything like that so another thing I can do is cut it exactly the size but what I'm actually gonna do cut it in half like this and then I can use both pieces and it's gonna be just like filleting a fish let's go around like this trying to go right in the middle something like that and I might have to sneak this in to connect those cuts I have a perfectly filleted mineral wool piece and I can take my piece put it in here the same way so those are the basics I'm also gonna have to rip down right here this is a two by four on a flat in order to fill in here and I'm just gonna tuck in some right here in those kinds of locations make sure i get as much as i can wherever i can also in case you were wondering this wall is going to be gone eventually this is going to be the other side of the wall and this will be non-existent but for now i'm just going to insulate it like this another thing that i did was used fire caulking like this in any location that there were holes down to the basement or up into the attic that is a code thing where I am. That is intended to make it so that if there is a fire, it can't travel from floor to floor as easy. So that's something to keep in mind. So now I can go to town, throw on some headphones, insulate this, try and keep my sanity. If you look at this wall, there are a lot of cuts to do. Maybe I'll start with that one just to get it out of the way. And then I'll work my way around into this closet, this one, and the 2x3 wall. And then we'll see how well it worked. totally insulated had a lot of stuff to cut around here and right here there is box there and there that used to be where my tv was you can see there's an outlet right here i filled this up with insulation i'm not using that for a tv anymore but i want to leave that option open there is a way to run wires down here i can just snake it this insulation can compress a little bit 
I'm not really worried about not being able to get wires in here in the future. Uh, and I tried to fill in every little nook and cranny. It was not easy, uh, especially in the closet here. I tucked insulation way in the back there. Eventually, this bulkhead kind of thing for the basement stairs is going to be insulated from the other side. But that doesn't have any right now. I took the trim off the door, tucked insulation all in here as much as I could. Looks pretty good in my opinion. Also, none of this is required by code. This is just something extra that I wanted to do. By the way, I know that this is not the definitive test on soundproofing insulation. I am by no means an expert in the soundproofing category. I just thought this would be a fun little test. I just wanted to show you how to cut and install this stuff. And I thought this test would give you a good idea of what it can do. Now I'm sure it can work hand in hand with like drywall. If you put a wall covering over it between the two drywall, that sound will bounce around and get absorbed into the insulation. And I'm sure after even the baseboards on and it's all covered up, it's going to make a huge difference. But the real test would be if I filled this with a different type of insulation like fiberglass, sealed it all up, did the mud, the tape, the paint, the baseboard, everything, the flooring, and then ripped it all out again and then did it all over again with the soundproofing and buttoned it back up, we would get some different results. Might be a cool experiment, but that would be a big waste of time and money for me whereas I just want to get this bedroom done. Maybe in the future, I'll set up like a box in my basement and try different materials and see how it goes. But for now, I'm just going to set up my speaker, set up the decibel meter in the same test locations and see what kind of results we got. Okay, the results are in. On this side, I won't say all of the numbers, but I did get an average reduction of 9.03 decibels. Over here, I got a reduction of 12.2 decibels, and over here, 7.6 decibels, which on average comes out to a reduction of 9.61 decibels. That number makes sense to me with all the research I did online. I was seeing between a 10 and 15 decibel reduction with three and a half inch mineral wool. And this right here is a two by three wall. I got as much in as I could here, but it makes sense that it's a lower reduction. And just for reference, that's like going from an alarm clock or a busy street down to a normal conversation. So the question is, is it worth it? A package of this particular thermofiber mineral wool was about $60. It covered about 40 square feet, and I used four of them in this room. So I spent about $240 in here to reduce the sound by almost 10 decibels. To me, it's worth it. To you, it might not be, but I'll leave that up to you. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you didn't know how to install this stuff, hopefully now you do. Let me know in the comments how I did. This was a fun little experiment for me. Uh, I'm probably going to be using this a lot in my videos, so keep an eye out for that. And if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description over to where you can get it, along with this thermofiber, just so you can check out some information on it. Thanks for watching. As always, if you haven't subscribed, definitely consider it, and we'll see you on the next one.